I found an interesting car on eBay that I would daily drive. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Ron Panda here. I was searching around on eBay again, just cause I like it. Not really intending to buy anything, but I'm always looking at cars. I've always been a car guy. And uh, I found this one, man. It's kind of interesting. I didn't even know it existed. And it's so interesting. Um, I would totally daily drive this. I know you should probably not buy a one-off concept car from a major automaker and daily drive this thing, but I kind of want to. <laughs> and I actually think it's fairly reasonably priced. First of all, it's a 1997 Chevy Malibu, Malibu Cruiser concept car. And what you can see here is this car is only uh, $13,000, $12,900 listed. Now for a 97 Chevy Malibu, you would be crazy to pay that kind of money for that car, but this one is pretty unique. And what I really like about it is in terms of nominal dollars, absolute dollars, you know, twelve nine is not outside of the realm of possibility for the average Joe. I mean, you can buy this car and you know, write a check for it, finance it, whatever. And it's not something like $170,000 Murcielago or something that's going to uh, break you financially. But what I love about this is it's actually pretty interesting. So first of all, it's a 97 Chevy Malibu. In the description here, it actually talks about that this was built by General Motors to kind of get into the tuner market. So you may remember the late 90s, you know, uh, street racing was a big thing, tuning cars was a big thing. The American auto makers wanted into that tuner market in a bad, bad way. It was really dominated by Honda and in some ways Toyota, but you know, things like the Dodge SRT4, the Dodge Neon high performance car, the Chevy Cobalt, you know, a lot of these companies were trying to get cars into the tuner market so much so, I remember there was a show, I think it was called Vegas with Josh Duhamel, and one of the characters there, she, you know, that was the big, that was the big reveal, is that it was a she that was into the tuna market, it wasn't just a guy thing, and she had a Chevy Cobalt that she had um, totally tuned up, customized, ratted up, body kitted, and I thought it was kind of funny because... For a rich person to go after the Chevy Cobalt was probably a stretch, but I get it was product placement. Now, this is kind of interesting because they made this to get in there. It looks like it was on the cover of the 2002 February issue of HCI Magazine. Not even sure what magazine that is. It was at the 2001 SEMA show in Vegas. It has only 12,000 miles on it, which is pretty small or pretty low. A 3.5 liter V6, but it has a turbocharger, which I'll show you there in a second. 19 inch wheels, which look like the Saab wheels, which would not, would not surprise me because GM and Saab were in a romantic relationship at that time. And it's something that is interesting because a lot of concept cars, custom cars, one, don't get VINs, um, two, never get sold. So you know, even on the rare occasion that an automaker runs into financial difficulty, sells off a concept car, sells off a one-off, oftentimes they cannot be used on the street. Now, my assumption is here that this one can. I guess I didn't really go through it well enough here, but there are some things that I really like and hate about this car, but um, I actually think overall it's actually pretty good and it's kind of stood the test of time. First of all, it is a Chevy Malibu, which I think is going to share a lot of componentry with the Oldsmobile Intrigue. I think these uh, door handles were the same. I think the interior is essentially the same. It has a little bit of this metallic green. It's almost like money green. I kind of remember a Maybach or a Maybach uh, available in a similar color. It's not the worst, but I would call it like toxic. Not toxic as in I don't like it, but uh, that's, I feel like the right color is like some sort of urban decay flavor like toxic sludge or something like that um and it's okay it's a it's a little bit brash but uh and it's a little bit of that 90s thing where it was kind of like take some weird color and add a bunch of metal flake to it and then uh throw on seven coats of clear you know that was kind of the thing i wouldn't exactly call it timeless but i also wouldn't call it like super outrageous you know so like some of the oranges and things like that that were also kind of popular now um, i'm going to show you here if we get into it a little bit more first of all it actually doesn't look all that Malibu-ish to me. So it looks like they use some aftermarket products like the, in the headlights and the rear tail lights for the most part. These wheels here may be aftermarket too, but they look a lot like what was available on the Saab 9.3. I think overall it looks pretty nice. From here, it kind of looks like a Nissan Maxima. 
you can see the rear spoiler on there the greenhouse i you know it never really occurred to me how much it looks like it but especially when they kind of smoothed out the front and the back it really gives it a maximum look which kind of shows you how much needless design that they had in the actual front fascias and how wimpy they looked normally um so a couple of things that i really find interesting is they did that kind of standard racing style cap here uh, gas filler cap carbon fiber rear spoiler there um, i think this all looks pretty good and here is where it starts getting in kind of interesting i do like those wheels i think those still look pretty good uh, these rear tail lights are kind of like the alteza tail lights the chrome with clear lenses that's okay these little fender vents here that are carbon fiber or the the bumper vents i think actually look pretty good i think there's a little bit of a closer up look somewhere in here um and i was actually kind of impressed with them so right there this front bumper looks actually kind of Saab 93-ish. It's nicely smoothed. It looks pretty manly. It's got nice deep lips here, which I think help make the bumper look more manly. The other thing they did here, which kind of looks a lot like the Chevy HHR, is kind of this brushed metal bar that goes across the front. And the other thing I like is that they looks like they've etched in the Chevy logo here as opposed to putting on that garish gold chevy bow tie i hate that bow tie i know on some of the new cars now they're blacking them out which is absolutely the right thing to do because they don't look very good this looks like an aftermarket headlight to me again it's just kind of that really typical all alteza chrome clear lens thing now what's funny is that even though this came from the factory the panel gap here is a little ugly and that may be because of the customization here of the bumper or maybe it was the the fit of the aftermarket headlight wasn't quite as good as the original but you know right here it's probably not as visible when you're looking at the car and you're kind of looking down on it but right there that could have probably been done a little bit better but it's not a situation where the bumper is drooping because there is almost no gap right there and almost no gap here on the fender uh you know it's a small thing but it would that would kind of clean it up a little bit but i'm actually pretty impressed by that and I, you know to me as i'm looking at that it doesn't scream malibu now probably what's most interesting to me is that they actually did the interior in a way that the chevys should have been done but they have done like this kind of gold or green carbon fiber weave on everything you've got carbon fiber on the steering wheel here you've got this whole instrument cluster surround the dash panel and then uh, the center console here is all in this carbon fiber. Now, I doubt it's actually carbon fiber. I have a feeling it's like, it's probably not a hydro dip, but it's some sort of applique over it is my guess. Um, but they probably did a lot of work on that. But what's also interesting here is the shifter has been replaced with this like handle shifter, which is kind of cool looking. And then the whole center console now runs to the back in this flat panel, which I actually really like. So you get this whole... Um, carbon fiber runner through the center kind of like a table runner and it goes all the way up to the back here which is pretty cool looking i mean they did a pretty nice job of it and integrated here into the back and then the cup holders also have like this billet aluminum surround to them that's kind of cool sparco racing seats front and back which is kind of interesting so it's a four place car uh there looks like there's a little bolster wear here but four uh you know, a concept car, that's probably fairly minimal wear. You know, for 12,000 miles, it's probably a little premature. But what I'm guessing is that that side bolster is so large, it's hard to get around. You know, guys are probably getting in and out of it, you know, at shows, letting people get in and out of it to take pictures. Not a big deal. That could be re-dyed. Uh, but overall, it's actually in pretty good shape. And I'm assuming that these seats were originals since there's so much wear there. It doesn't look like they did anything with the door panels, which is probably a little bit of a miss. But I get, you know, they're trying to keep it simple. But it's almost like at this time, you would have really kind of gone big or gone home. And so you would take some of this like carbon fiber and uh, do like color match door panels. It's funny because now Chevy is doing that with body color match door panels on like the camaro um and some of their cars it's also interesting they have like that carbon fiber piece here under the hood so you know maybe it is a real panel of carbon fiber it doesn't do anything to reduce weight it's just four looks because you're adding carbon fiber and here is that turbo so this three and a half liter six cylinder should actually be a nice reliable easy to maintain engine you can see the spark plug leads right up here so it's going to be um it's going to be easy to maintain you know and you can get all the spark plugs change on your own lots of room under here all the parts are going to be readily available 
Um, but the only thing that's different here is this turbocharger, which, you know, I don't know how much horsepower he said he gets out of this, but I know the three point, what, eight liter V6 from GM with the supercharger on it was, what was that, like 240 horse or something like that? Maybe, maybe more. But um, it's kind of interesting, this turbocharger and all from the factory, you know, as a exercise. So that's kind of cool. So I bet it has some guts. You know, it's all automatic transmission, but it looks nicely done. I mean, it's so funny how much room there is under the hood here. So, and then it looks like there's an aftermarket stereo in it. So anyway, you know what? I am kind of impressed by this car. I am intrigued by it. At 12.9, if I had the spare cash on this little bad boy, man, I'd be picking it up. So anyway, I'm kind of a fan of this car. Again, right here, it looks like a Nissan Maxima, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's just uh, it's just a unique car. Uh, front wheel drive, I'm guessing here. And so actually it would probably be pretty dailyable. And the nice thing is it probably has some guts because of this, the turbocharger in there, but it probably isn't obnoxious or herky jerky and probably is pretty easy to maintain doesn't have a lot of miles and you know what i'm kind of impressed with this car if you want to buy it 12.9 on ebay right now and i tell you what if you do let me know i'd love to check it out hey just another interesting car i found on ebay that's it peter rom panda out